I spent the weekend working on a dissertation about the nature of interactive media in the 21st century. You may be wondering why I told you that. Well, I spent the last two or three days locked away, studying, working, writing and developing ideas. Putting pen to paper, my laptop was broken so I had to use the old method. Anyway, while I was away from the cut and thrust of university life, there was a meeting at the station. It was decided. I was told by a majority, but I don't know how you can have a majority without one of the key players there, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was told my regular fortnightly slot had been cut down, meaning I'm now broadcasting one night a week. Thursday rather contradicts the idea of a nightly debate show. Perhaps I could call it a once nightly debate, but um, actually, no, that would probably confuse my listeners. And the uh, continuity links have been made, so it's too late now. So that's put pay to a yellow never of my ideas. Interestingly, Charles has done all right out of this. He's gained an extra hour a night for his show. Spoils of war, I guess is 50 pieces of silver. Geraldine got an extra hour. I don't know why. Do you need one more hour to talk about gardening? Especially to students. It's just the wrong demographic. But she wouldn't know anything about that, being an environmental science student. But she gets more airtime than me. They actually said to me once that my show is being broadcast to the wrong demographic. Too highbrow. If you can't be highbrow at a university, where can you be highbrow? That's all I'm saying. They didn't like that. I had to I had to apologize uh, for raising my voice afterwards, but um one slot. There are advantages um and disadvantages to it, you know. Like um like uh actually who am I kidding? You know, there's not. It's just one big disadvantage. Giles though, has got an extra hour. An extra hour to plug himself, to prove himself. One more hour. Time is a precious thing. There is not a lot of it left on this degree now. And unlike Giles, I can't just walk straight into the BBC and just mention my second cousin's removed name and get a golden handshake. I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, a bronze handshake, but all I get is a pat on my back and uh, an on your way. They probably wouldn't even cover my travel expenses. Petrol money, you know. There's no failures being called in. Especially for me, I've uh, I've dragged myself up, education-wise, culturally, and uh, that's that's no common to my family. They're nice enough people, but at the end of the day, they're nobodies. I've got where I am today by myself, and Giles, <laughs> Giles was born with a big silver spoon in his mouth. He was probably born with a lifetime supply of solid silver cutlery and bloody pocket squares. And that's why sometimes I ask myself, what is it all for? All this hard work and dedication. There's not many people who can spend a vast, no, 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 a bulk of their life dedicating themselves to their job. I'm not one of those who uh, clocks in at nine and just does the humdrum stuff, then clocks out at five to go home to a TV meal. You know, Ross Kemp on gangs or something. I don't want to be one of those people. Because those people are nobodies. Who remembers nobodies when they die? Well, their families, but but, uh, apart from them, um, um, well, maybe maybe, uh, associates, close friends, uh, work colleagues. That's not really the point. Compared to someone like John Lennon, they're not going to be remembered. You know. I want to be like John Lennon. Like Jesus. Remembered for being great. Well, actually, I don't. I don't really think Jesus was remembered for. Jesus was remembered for being uh, the son of someone else who was more famous. But uh, maybe that's not a good example. I was just thinking of people with beards who died quite early. But um, I'll stick with John Lennon. John Lennon, yeah, yeah, that'll work. Um, I want to be like John Lennon, without Yoko Ono. I don't need a Yoko. I don't need a Scouse accent, and I do not need to be in a band. But apart from that, I want to be John Lennon. I know many people have said those sort of things in the past, but I know that I want to be remembered. 
when I'm famously cut down in the prime of my life, whether that be 80 or 90, maybe even 100, I want people to go, that guy, that guy was good. That guy was great. He was someone I want to be. I want children to want to be me, rather than not know me. At the moment, I'm in the unfortunate position of being relatively unknown. Obviously, I, I'm known in a few circles, you know. I have my loyal fan base at the Sound of Surrey and uh, my uh, Twitter followers, you know, 162, but uh, apart from them, I'm not in the public's conscience at this moment. I want to be in people's minds. Not like Darren Brown. Uh, I just want to be remembered without having to have a beard or a goatee. People knew who you were when you were working at the BBC. That was mainly down to the name badges the work experience students had to wear, but I remember one story, actually, um, from when I was working up at the BBC, you know. When I used to work up at Television Centre to do the news night late night reviews, uh, that go on BBC Two, you know, big audience. Trying to work at TV Centre is rather difficult due to the morons coming and going. <laughs> And no, I'm not referring to Gavin Esler or the Director General, Mr. Mark Thompson, who's actually not a bad fellow. But I am referring to the general public, the tourists, the great unwashed. And by the look of some of them, they were unwashed. They miranda and ramble aimlessly with no other place to go, taking photographs and asking where they can find t-shirts. And that's just the Japs. That's not racist, that's a fact. Nine out of ten Polish immigrants, for example, will become manual labourers. You know, and um, good for them. Let's just not have any of that Eastern European cutting corner, shall we? In the long run, it's not doing anyone any favours. But perhaps I'm, I'm wondering from the point here. The point is... The point... Well, the point is that the BBC, in their infinite wisdom, have thought, if thought's the right word, that having daily tours of what is technically a workplace is a good idea. For me, inviting idiots into a place of work is not a good idea. It interferes. They should have probably learnt their lesson from the time they asked Timmy Mallet to host his own topical talk show in the 80s. It wasn't even aired. I only know about this, though, because the BBC gave me the tapes to... Uh, reuse as their budget didn't stretch to buying any new ones. Just shows you the lack of intelligence of some of the chief executives that run the place. Although, to be fair, the producer of Mallet Matters sadly passed away a few years back in a freak DIY related incident. I hear at the funeral, um, <laughs> Timmy quipped in the eulogy that uh, he was probably hammered at the time, which, seeing as he was uh, a chronic alcoholic, wasn't in the best of tastes. Anyway, anyway, going back to TV centre and tours, you know. When I bumped into one moron on the way to a meeting with Paxman, quite literally as I, I dropped Paxman's favourite Garfield mug in the collision, when Paxman found out he was fuming, and rightly so, he had that cut for eight years. I did tell him it was an ordinary that came in and smashed it all over the floor, but he wasn't having any of it. And from his point of view, I can see why he threw that sushi at me. I don't blame him. I blame the general public as a whole. I don't go around their place of work and stare and point and look at what they do. I don't go down to the labour escape and wander around and then watch them sign bloody gyro checks, do I? Signing checks, or contracts for that matter, is an art form that seems to have been lost at the BBC. And it's a real shame to hear about the BBC cutbacks. Mark Thompson, in my opinion, has made a foolish decision there. Cutting back on talent is something that the BBC seems to be expert at. When I was, um, for want of a better word, sacked from the BBC, they lost talent. They lost something, no, no, someone who could have been no evidence. Someone like that, you know, I, I don't know. But the BBC is foolish to cut back. There's all this talk, well, no pun intended, of a few radio stations for the chop. And it would be a shame to lose talented broadcasters. But at the same time, this money will surely be going into making new programmes for 
I don't know, new talent? Or, or maybe even established talent who haven't quite had that break yet. Someone, uh, I don't know, just, uh, just to pull a name at the back. I don't know, random, you know, me, for example. So if anyone from the BBC is listening, I am available. It's the, uh, it's the same contact as it was before, you know. Uh, same email if um, they've still got that on record. They should do it. So, uh, uh, if not, I'll fax it over, or I could, uh, you know, I could phone you if you want. You know, um, you could phone. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, let's not jump the gun here. But I think the BBC will be beating down my door in the next few months. I certainly hope so. Anyway, must remember to leave the answer phone on.